Hello and welcome to my channel on Ancient and Chinese Astrology. I am professional astrologer Zagata from the website 100percentastrology.com and in this video I would like to discuss the topic of why Babylonian astrologers are wrong in their assertions about invisible planets. Now this is a, a very uh, hot topic literally pun intended here is also i have a picture on my website one of the main pictures is obviously of a flame meaning knowledge meaning uh, fire meaning the sun meaning illumination etc etc but uh, anyhow uh, let's let's get to it this is a picture that i've picked for for, for this video from the free website pixabay and i cropped the, the picture some somewhat so let's uh, let's get to it let's get started with uh, by first defining what uh, what is an invisible planet now uh, it's not uh, it the definition depends on what uh, what type of astrology you are uh, what type of tradition you are you are following and, and practicing or, or being interested in why well first of all let's get uh, uh, let's let's start with history and uh, and how the definition came to be i mean let's start with astronomy which is again like a cloth like uh, a piece of clothing that uh, uh, an external apparatus that astrology uses to to derive you know to to to, to divine the, the 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 thoughts of the divine so the point is originally uh, the definition uh, was and is uh, that an invisible planet is a planet that is astronomically invisible. In other words, as I've been explaining, there is my channel on YouTube about ancient and Chinese astrology, about the uh, brief history of ancient astrology, and also about the sidereal and tropical zodiac, and not just this, where the astrology must fully reflect the sky, etc., etc. The point is, uh, they were observing the sky for uh, the, the the Chaldeans, the Mesopotamian culture were observing the sky for millennia, many millennia. Likewise, the Indian culture also uh, were observing the sky. And um, so uh, we're talking about strict astronomy here. In other words, we're talking, uh, we're not talking about, uh, we're not talking about this, about a two-dimensional uh, chart. We're talking about strict strict astronomy. In other, uh, so uh, we're, we're looking into... Uh, the local horizon, uh, the atmospheric extinction. Well, again, these are strict astronomical terms that astrologers may not be, or astrological astrological students may 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 be, may not be familiar with. But uh, we're talk we're talking about uh, the horizon system, where how far planets are uh, on the horizon, how far the sun is, how high is. I mean altitude. Uh, we're talking about not the ecliptic, the horizon. We're talking about uh, azimuth. We're talking about the magnitude of the planet, of the sun, of a or of, of a given star, etc., uh, etc. Et so all these there are these conditions need to be met. There are criteria that need to be met for a given celestial body to be visible on the on the horizon. So again, this is strict astronomy, and this is where the Babylonians added. Uh, Mesopotamian culture was uh, was unsurpassed, and in fact, to this day, they they, they are unsurpassed. Why? Because uh, even uh, NASA and the so-called scientists with their you know uh, multi-million dollar gadgets and technology, they cannot uh, predict. I mean, calc pre calculate and predict the exact helical phases of um, of the planets, and especially of uh, of Mars and Mercury, which are the most difficult planets to uh, uh, to calculate their hel helical phases of. As uh, Roman Kolev, one of the uh, yeah, one of the top experts and specialists on this topic in the world, has uh, has explained. So uh, the point is that this was the original uh, definition of an invisible planet. Now, if uh, I realize that to to, to the majority of, of 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 people listening to this, they they probably hear this for the first time because in the later tradition, this uh, definition was was. Uh, was really really modified and changed now uh, the babylonian astrologers i mean those influenced by roman Kolev and others they claim that and not just claim but obviously the keys were lost so uh hellenistic but it's not just that the, so the keys were lost and the hellenistic astrologers they did not uh, know how to correctly calculate the planetary uh, phases like what what we call what is known as phases planetary condition of uh, appearing, disappearing, uh, what what we have from the uh, ephemeris, uh, ephemerides from the uh, tables showing the planetary uh, movements are 
first station, second station, or first sitting, second sitting, it is more uh, properly called, of the planet when it stops from our perspective on Earth. But we don't, we can't see the, the again the helical faces. So uh, you'd either need a specialized software for this. Uh, like uh, Roman College program that I have uh, that I will show, or you you would need some astronomical software like the free version of Altione or some other uh, software that that uh, uh, calculates the the helical phases. Now, uh, so getting back to the Hellenistic period, they started saying when a planet is within 15 degrees, 15 portions of the sun. Uh, less than 15 up to 15 it's uh, it's invisible however when it when it uh, uh, distances itself uh, 15 or more uh, degrees or portions from the sun it makes a helical phases within seven days before or seven days after the birth uh, of, of the chart whether it's again regardless whether it's talking pr uh, primarily natal astrology but it could be uh, you know horror election etc although this didn't survive so the point is uh, this definition is uh, very, very different, uh, and um, in fact, uh, again, this uh, this notion, this this school of the gradual development versus, uh, rather, the, the sudden invasion versus the gradual development, this concept here of uh, of the invisibility of the planets also proves and shows that again, uh, astrology uh, developed as time went by. Why? Well, because. Uh, if you, the Persian Arabic culture, they started tradition, they started, they changed the definition and they started making, uh, dif differentiating between planets that are combust, that are within eight, eight and a half degrees of the sun, either way, in front and behind, versus planets that are uh, between eight and a half and 17 uh, degrees uh, uh, distant from the sun and, and of course they also uh, use the definition of uh, in the heart of the sun Kazini when a planet is within 18 minutes or 17 minutes 17, 17 and a half minutes of the sun which in the Hellenistic tradition was within one one degree so again uh, yes they lost the keys for the visibility for the visibility how to calculate the exact visibility of the planets and in fact if you read the ancient astrologers you will see such as Albiruni one of the greatest astronomers and others you will see that they give they gave uh, different uh, uh, different distances depending on whether a planet is superior or inferior and also depending on again on the climate on, on the on the location on the atmospheric extinction so they it was not just standardized 15 degrees so anyhow the point is that astrologers uh, from a certain perspective they disagreed vehemently on this from another uh, they uh, as time went by they understood that they lost they lost this uh, this key about the visibility of the planet and they started you know tinkering with these distances and you know uh, trying to be more, more specific but the point is as I will uh, later also explain uh, the astrologers differed in their uh, in their view uh, as to uh, as to how uh, invisible planets act I mean in, in terms of how afflicted invisible planets are uh, so uh, uh, let's uh, let me let me first uh, show what uh, what prompted me to make this video. Uh, uh, now, years ago, I don't remember, probably seven eight years ago, uh, someone that was taught by Roman Kolev, some uh, female astrologer or student or whatever. Uh, she, I was told, I was, I was told this by a, an astrological friend of mine. That's a, pro, she's a professional astrologer, and she, uh, she told me this, uh, this about this case. So uh, this female uh, student or pro astrologer, or I mean, uh, wanting to become an astrologer or somehow, or pretending to be an astrologer, uh, saw the chart of a, of a woman, again, real, real, uh, real person, real, uh, real woman, not a hypothetical chart. And again, I don't have the chart, but what I remember with 100% certainty is that the woman has had, uh, has rather, she's alive, uh, uh, Gemini Ascendant. And with Gemini Ascendant, as you see the Ascendant, again, ignore everything else because you will see why. Uh, with Gemini, Libra is the fifth house, the primary house of children. And Libra is ruled, of course, by Venus. And this woman had Venus, with Gemini Ascendant, had Venus in the 10th. And because this Venus was invisible, again, you have to remember, by invisible, we mean astronomically invisible, at least the Babylonian tradition. So, uh, I don't have the details. What I, Again, what I was told was the, the, the software showed that Venus was invisible, 
it, it may have not been combust or even under the rays. It was invisible. She was invisible. She was invisible if you want to call it a female Venus. Uh, and just based on this alone, folks, this uh, so-called astrologer predicted to this young woman that she would not have children. Now, can you believe this? Can you believe this? Now, what what this astrologer either did not know or did not take into account was that first, Venus is angular. Second, Venus is in Pisces, which is a, 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 a zoidion, an image, a sign that gives many children. And third, Venus is in its own exaltation. Fourth, Venus is in its own uh, triplicity or trigon. I don't know the exact uh, position of Venus, but it was in Pisces. So it could have been in its own uh, confines or bounds also. But the point is Venus is essentially dignified. It Venus is angular. Venus is in a sign of many children. And just because Venus was invisible, this uh, so-called astrologer pre uh, predicted to this young woman that she would not have children. Now, this is, again, this is one of the reasons I'm making this video to, to, to destroy this, this uh, assertion that invisible planets, again, that invisible planets are dead, that invisible planets are... Uh, impotent that they are powerless that they are totally subjugated that they, they, you know that they um uh, that they're basically again they 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 can't act they 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 can't produce anything you know they're invisible they're you know they have no power uh again this um what uh it, that was what uh, at least initially what I, what Roman Kolev and, and the other uh, those around him thought that about him they later on they started uh, uh uh, you know, tweaking things a little, saying, you know, invisible planets, they uh, they cause a certain type of vice uh, in a given chart. Again, this is uh, somewhat vague, but the point is, it, that it, uh, it, it's not just the early tradition, it's not just the Babylonian, the, the Mesopotamian tradition. Later astrologers also, but again, they, although they, uh, they, differentiate, they differentiate it whether a planet is combust or under the race or etc. But anyhow, the point is, uh, the Babylonian astrologers were, you know, very, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, unambiguous, and you know, they do, they did not beat around the bush. A planet is invisible; it's dead. Forget about it. You know, nothing will come out of this planet. Well, folks, you want to know what happened? This woman had two children, and has, has so far had two children. Again, you will notice that Venus is in Pisces, which is a double-bodied image. In other words, it's a it's a mutable sign, as the moderns would say, but it has two bodies. And when planets have, when significators have two bodies, it's just one indication, but it means two. It, or it could show twins. So this woman, she had two children. And she, she, may, she may have had more, I don't know, but from what I was told, later on this woman had two children. And again, someone would say, you know, you are... Uh, uh, you are simplifying. I'm not simplifying anything, folks. This is a real life example. And I uh, purposefully uh, selected it to be in the sidereal zodiac. How do you know that it's in the sidereal? Because uh, the, the rising times of the images of the zodiac are, you know, they're they are unequal. Well, again, the sidereal zodiac is not fixed uh, when you view it from the perspective of, of the. Of the, of the of the rising times of the science. So anyhow, I put it so that the ascend, both the ascendant and Venus are in uh, in, in Gemini, because with, with tropical world, uh, fast forward 23, 24 uh, degrees. So anyhow, this was again such, uh, such. but again, I, as I was saying, someone could say, you know, you are, uh, it's not as, uh, again, this is a real life example. This is this uh, uh, so-called astrologer based her predictions only based on this. And, um, but I will show you other cases. I will show you other cases because again, it's, uh, uh, someone could try and get away with, you know, defend the Babylonian, this Babylonian assertion that, uh, you know, but I will show you re other real life cases where a planet was invisible and you will see what happened. This is the purpose of the video that the assertion that, Bab that uh, you know, invisible planets are dead and can't produce is, is dead wrong. It, it, it just, it's just dead wrong. Uh, uh, next, uh, let's, uh, well, let's get started. Let's get started with, uh, with the actual cases. Folks, now uh, let's. Uh, so I explained that I will start with the 
with the uh, how shall I put it with the Babylonian uh, with the Babylonian uh, concept with the astronomical concept of invisibility. In other words, again, uh, the vast majority of in fact they are only uh, Rumin Kolev. Uh, the Italians, influenced by Beza and Fumagalli, and who else? There are a number of, of astrological schools in the world that, that have this concept, the correct concept of, of the visibility. The others are parroting this 15 degree uh, approximation. And they, 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 don't have, they don't even have the astronomical knowledge of the software to see it. They're just saying the planet is me. And, you know, it's, it may be okay to, to say that... Uh, uh, but when you're making claims that a planet is making a phasis, in other words, that a planet is making an appearance or disappearance based on, uh, on you know, approximations that have nothing to do with reality, then we have a problem. Then we have a problem. Especially for profession, when we're dealing with when a planetary, or for determining the, the, the captain or the, the curious, the, the ruler of, of the whole horoscope. This ancient doctrine is preserved by uh, by Porphyry, fourth century astrologer and uh, philosopher, uh, and Antiochus also. But Porphyry, for the uh, anyhow, uh, Porphyry, uh, Antiochus had other important concepts that I will share later on. Now let's get started. So again, we have the Babylonian, the astronomical concept that I will show first. Then I will show the. Uh, uh, the medieval and the, uh, or rather the Hellenistic and the medieval because they are somewhat different. But the point is, let's get started. Uh, now, uh, let's see. This one, now Forrest Ackerman, uh, again, I, I looked this up, all these charts from astro.com. Uh, I believe all of, I think all of them are from um, uh, birth certificate in hand, meaning AA, meaning, and I also try to find charts that are uh, that are not uh, uh, a round hour or a full hour, uh, full hour, round hour, or quarter hour, or at least full hour or, or round hour. Uh, so again, as you see, 6.22 a.m., uh, extremely accurate. Uh, at least it, it, it seems to be. The point is uh, that uh, this native has, uh, again, this is the sidereal chart, again, the in unequal rising times, the non-fixed zodiac. This is the fixed, the tropical, the, the fixed rising times, as you see. It, uh, so... Uh, Capri uh, sorry, uh, Scorpion Ascendant in both charts. Again, I calculated this with the Aldebaran 15 because of the Babylonian astrologers, even though I showed cases where this Ayanamsha is incorrect. It's it's off. Anyhow, for, for their sake, I'm, I'm using the Aldebaran 15, although I would use Lahiri or Krishnamurti. So anyhow, uh, we're... So, you know, so, with Scorpion, uh, so with Scorpion Ascendant, obviously Mars is the Lord of the Ascendant. And you will notice that Mars is... 22 degrees, in fact, more than 22 degrees uh, away from the sun. Yes, the sun is catching up to Mars, but the point is that Mars, by all accounts, is not under the rays. Mars, again, this approximation, that Mars is visible, that Mars is okay because, well, it's not 15 degrees or so 17 and a half degrees, right? Right? Take a look. However, when, uh, when we look at the chart with astronomical software, with uh, in, this is Roman Kolev's Porfiry Magus 2 that I have, we will notice that uh, again, with, with this is with the Aldebaran Ayanamsha, you will notice that the planets that are this is how he marks them very uh, useful. The planets that are in, uh, in uh, gray are astronomically invisible, so Mars is in gray. Again, ignore the distances, this is the astronomical sky, so the Mars was invisible. Uh, Mercury was invisible, the moon was invisible, and obviously when you look that the moon is very, very close to the sun, it's under the, I mean, it's uh, very, very, so again, it's it's about to, to apply to, uh, it's last quarter, it's about to become a new moon, so it's, uh, it's, it's losing all its light. So the point is that Mars is astronomically invisible. Uh, again, no question about it, because the software shows, shows so, and the software is based on many, many observations over uh, 10 years. So, uh, again, Mars and Mercury are trickier to calculate, especially Mercury, but again, we have, uh, you can look in, you can check this with, with some other software, but the point is, uh, a Babylonian astrologer would say, oh my God, you know, the Lord of the Ascendant is invisible, you know, this, this native will never, you know, this native is done, you know, this native will never, will not amount to anything, this native will not, you know, and uh, also, um, uh, taking a, a leaf out of, of, of Jyotish, of Indian astrology, that they use the ascendant not just for, uh, they, they use the ascendant for, 
uh, for for the strength of the native in terms of not just the physical body but whether the native craves attention whether the native can bounce back from challenges whether the native you know uh, 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 you know wants to succeed and wants to you know wants to to push and push and push Otherwise, people with, with, with weak ascendants and ascendant lords, they would, you know, as um, some astrologers say, you know, they would knock on a door, they would get rejected. They would knock second time, they would get rejected, they would give up. Not so for people with strong ascendants and ascendant lords. So, uh, again, with uh, ascendant lord uh, invisible, I'm ignoring the fact here that in the sidereal, you know, and in, actually in the tropical also, it's it's a verse to the ascendant. It's uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it cannot defend its home, so to say. Ign ignore this. O only talking about visibility. Oh my God, the Lord of the Ascendant is invisible. You know this, this. You know this native is done. You know. You know it's. Well, friends, take a look what I wrote. Again, this is again easily uh, easily uh, you know you, you can easily verify this information on the internet and again astro.com. This guy was Forrest Ackerman, magazine editor, science fiction writer, and literary agent. In fact, he was one of the leading, uh, uh, one of the leading people in the science fiction um, field. Uh, so again, now again, I'm not gonna bother that the sun is in the ascendant, conjunct the ascendant. No, ignore this. We're talking only about the visibility. Okay. So again, the Lord One, and yet. This man, you know, is a historical figure. This man, you know, he, if you look him up, you will see what, how, how valuable and what, uh, you know, what a towering figure he was, again, uh, in, for the science fiction uh, community and field. So, again, this doctrine here, it, you know, it totally, totally misses the mark uh, in, in this case. Furthermore, you will note here that the file, uh, the, the name of the file that I wrote that this man lived 92 years. Now, again, easily uh, uh, you can check this uh, information. The point is that if you read ancient sources uh, that deal with uh, the, the length of life, if, for example, if you see that the Lord of the Ascendant is, is helically set, meaning is astronomically invisible, they will say, you know, uh, this is one indication of a short life. Well, folks, I'm sorry, but this native lived 92 years old. And again, this is from a birth certificate. So something has to give, right? Either the doctrine is wrong, the time of birth is wrong, or something else is really, really wrong here. Okay? Obviously, the doctrine is wrong. Because the time of birth is accurate. The Scorpio is the ascendant in both cases. Okay? So, the, the doctrine by itself that invisible planets are dead, etc., is wrong. There are other factors to take into consideration or mitigating factors that I will... But again, this is why I named the video. Babylonian astrologers are wrong in their assertion about the invisible planets. Okay, let's move on because I have other charts. Uh, next, I have sp is, uh, especially selected such charts that, uh, you know, I've taken, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've, uh, it's not easy to find such charts with, with accurate time of birth with, and especially when you, uh, when you uh, want to make sure that the planets are, are actually invisible. Uh, okay, next, let's see, what was the other one? Uh, this one. Uh, John Renaldo Otina, I've written down, again, this is from Astro.com, business executive, civil servant. So, again, this was a, a public figure, civil servant. This was not a, you know, this was, and as you see, the chart is eminent, actually, but let's not, the point is, here, you will notice that, uh, uh, again, I've, uh, I want to show you cases that, are, that do not just concern the Lord of the Ascendant, the, 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 the Lords of, 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 of other houses. And, and see what actually happened. Again, that way you get a, a multifaceted picture. So, uh, what we see here is that Mars is the Lord of the Fifth. In the, again, the, I'm, I'm doing this primarily, uh, again, uh, the Babylonian astrologers, you know, those of Roman Kolev and his students, those fanatics, it's those of them especially that are fanatics, they discard the tropical zodiac. They, again, so they would work in the sidereal. So, looking at the sidereal first, Mars is not just in the Fifth, house in the fifth domicile relative to, to the cancer ascendant mars is the lord is because mars is in its own domicile scorpio so mars is lord of the fifth and in the fifth and you will notice that mars is 22 degrees uh, away from the sun yes the sun is catching up to mars but the point is 22 degrees you know mars should be you know by all accounts by sorry by hellenistic and medieval accounts uh, you know mars should be fine mars is should be visible you know it should produce etc etc 
here also in the, in the tropical chart mars is in the fifth domicile from the leo ascendant so mars is in the fifth house fifth place so again it 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 is pertinent to the topic of children again also also in the tropical chart now looking at his uh at his uh with with roman college program at his uh, at the astronomical sky uh, again i've removed the uh, 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 the zodiac uh, some cases have i've just left the stars I, sh I should have removed the stars but anyhow we see here again mars is gray therefore mars is invisible as you see the other planets are not i mean mars and mercury are invisible venus is visible and uh so mars the lord of the fifth is in the fifth but it's invisible oh my god you know the babylonian astrologer would say you know this native is done you know this native will not have children because the lord of the fifth is invisible you know that's it the native is done i mean that's the delineation right the planet is dead well friends take a look what i've written down this native again public information i get tired of, of again I've, all i'm showing is you can easily check and prove i mean and, and, and uh, verify uh, so again uh, the native had three sons what's going on here oh my god the, the planet is dead well no it's not dead obviously for some reason something is off again something is off the native had three sons so uh uh again these astrologers they would ignore that uh that Jupiter, significator of children in the sidereal chart, is in Cancer, a planet of many children. Jupiter is trying to the fifth to the fifth house, etc., etc. That the, the, the Lord of the Fifth is conjunct planets in Scorpio, which are signs of many children, etc., etc. But ignore this again. This is again we are not supposed to do this. The planet is invisible. Forget about it. It's dead. You know the native is doomed. No children. The children will die. You know, etc., etc. But uh, in fact, the children won't die. He won't have children. Sorry, three, three, three children. Again, in the tropical chart, Mars is in the fifth, but it's of the sect, and uh, again, it's trying to. The Lord of the fifth is is regarding the fifth by a very strong trine. By what I mean is, uh, I will make a separate video for the strongest aspects because Leo and Sagittarius have a, a connection; they are connected with their connected images, so extremely strong trine. Uh, okay, uh, let's see next, which is which was the third case. Uh, there was another one I believe mm. yes uh, this one uh, this oh it's not this one anyhow let's uh, let's go one by one now this is not otherly and never heard of him I'm not into the music uh, field but he was a jazz musician not only he not only was he a jazz musician as you see he was indicted into the uh, inducted I, I should say not indi indicted <laughs> inducted so <laughs> he was not uh, yeah he was inducted into the jazz hall of fame so again for, uh, so looking into the chart we see that uh, the ascendant is different again basing this on the on the sidereal zodiac because of the of the babylonian fanatics so uh the lord of the ascendant is combust it is invisible let's first of all again depending on whether we are uh, we, if we're using the hellenistic version or the even some late medieval astrologers would say 15 degrees the planet is making an appearance the planet is visible well it's almost 17 degrees but let's look at uh, again, not naturally, as you see, uh, let me uh, zoom, uh, as you see, Mars is grey, Mars is astronomically invisible, you will see that uh, Mercury is making uh, evening first, minus 6, in other words, this mean, EF means e uh, it made, a, um, it made a, a rising in the evening, evening first, 6 days before birth, Venus is visible, Saturn is, 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 uh, is visible, etc., uh, moon, um, uh, this of obviously visible moon and um, and uh, Jupiter. The point is, the Lord of the Ascendant is invisible. Oh my God! You know the native. You know again, the native will not amount to something. The native, will, you know, the, the, the native is weak. The native will not, you know, uh, you know, uh, crave attention, recognition. The native will not be able to bounce back from challenges, from difficulties, from trials. You know, oh my God! You know, the native is done. Well, folks, obviously, again, another case that's dead, dead wrong. Why? Well, well, 
And uh, again, the tropical uh, chart has no uh, has no such problem. But I'm doing this the, in the tropical chart. Mars is the Lord of the fifth and the Lord of the twelfth. Obviously, with every Sagittarius ascendant. Again, uh, so the point is, uh, Mars is is invisible, and yet this native was inducted into the Jazz Hall of Fame. Was a you know he performed etc and obviously with the tropical lord of the 50s in the first lord of the 50s conjunct the lord of the 10th the lord of the 10th is conjunct venus planet one of the the major planets of music etc etc but let, let's not get the point is uh something is very very wrong again and again so uh okay next uh let's see uh let's uh yes this one uh brad pitt one of the most famous actors in the world, one of the sexiest men in the world, etc, etc, many awards, many etc, etc, extremely public figure, extremely famous. Again, basing this primarily, again, uh, birth certificate, 6.31 a.m. Uh, sidereal chart, Scorpio Ascendant, the Lord of the First is Mars. Uh, in the second, Mars is less than 15 degrees, so... Uh, some astrologers would say, you know, Mars is making, Mars is setting, Mars is making a phasis. Well, no, it's not. Take a look at, again, astronomical reality. We see that, as you see here, sidereal zodiac, how, why is it? Well, because the rising times are unequal. The, the wrong rising times, again, sidereal. Sagittarius and Cancer, as you, as you see, are unequal. Anyhow, the point is, Mars, as you see, is gray. But these planets are not. A Mercury will make a phasis, Mercury will sink, evening last seven. Seven days after the birth, Mercury will become invisible. Uh, no, so uh, the point is, Mars is invisible, the Lord of the Ascendant. Oh my God, you know, oh my God, the Lord of the Ascendant is invisible. The native will never amount to anything, you know. Friends, this guy is one of the most famous actors in, in recent decades. One of the most handsome people, one of the most influential people, followed by millions and millions of people. Again, this doctrine should be if not totally rejected, then really, 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 uh, you know, uh, redacted and edited, you know, because this is pathetic. Can you imagine doing, saying this to, to Brad Pitt when he was young? You will not amount to anything. You will not be able to uh, to hold the attention of the public because you are weak. You are you, a sentient lord yourself. You know, you are weak. So, um, let's see. In the, in the tropical chart, we see that uh, Mars is lord of the fifth the 12th and we see that mars is uh, mars is exalted first of all mars is lord a uh, lord of the fifth in the second well this is and uh, the ascendant lord is in the fifth well this is one indication that the native will profit a lot from children and from fifth house matters which is obviously uh you know uh acting entertainment uh it could be speculation also depending on the chart the point is lord of the fifth in the second exalted uh, yes, it's afflicted by the South Node, but this is a very eminent chart, which uh, sort of uh, uh, it has some other rules, so to say. It, it, it's playing at a higher level. The point is, Lord of the Fifth in the Second and Jupiter Planet of World in the Fifth, this guy sold the rights of uh, the, the fo photos of his children for 14 million dollars. 14, one four. 14 million dollars. World record. Again, planet is exalted, it gives extraordinary results. And it's a night chart, so it's a, a malefic of the same. So again, something uh, uh, something really, really special. Uh, in the sidereal chart, we have the Lord of the Second in the Fifth. Uh, and also very this, this very close reception. Uh, Jupiter is receiving Mars, whereas here, Jupiter is received by Mars. The point is, anyhow, let's not get into the topical stuff. The point is, again, Lord of the Ascendant, invisible, oh my God, wrong. Dead, dead wrong, again and again. Uh, obviously, I have also written down that he has three children. Uh, in, the, in the tropical chart, Mars is the lord of the fifth, but he has Jupiter in the fifth. But the point is, three children. Biological. He has adopted others with Angelina Jolie. Uh, okay, next. Uh, uh, David Stratham. Uh, this is uh, an actor. Uh, Straytern. Sorry, I'm not familiar with this guy. Anyhow. I found him by uh, conducting research for this topic. Uh, Mars, uh, uh, Mars is the ascendant lord in both cases. Again, uh, this is uh, again from a birth certificate. Extremely accurate time. It seems to 37 a.m. So Mars, the lord of the ascendant. Mars is within uh, 11 
uh, degrees of the sun so mars let's see the program david straighter yes as you see mars is gray mars is invisible jupiter is making a facet but we disregard that jupiter made a helical rising four days before birth uh, uh we see that uh uh, Mercury disappeared two days before birth in the evening, evening class minus two. The point is the ascendant lord is invisible. Oh my god, you know, you are done. The native is done. No recognition, you know, the native will be weak. The native, you know, will not amount to anything. The, you know, the lord of the ascendant is, you know, disregard. It's, it's third, it's in the third house, it's canon. Oh my god, friends, friends, again, this guy is an actor. This guy is a success, has had a successful career. He's a public figure. Again, uh, sorry, but dead dead wrong so something really really is uh, is off again and again uh he's also uh, yes uh ignore this he's not a magazine editor. he's a uh, he's an actor look, again look him up david straight here here's the data uh next uh let's see uh well this guy jim carrey a very famous actor obviously uh again um Looking at the sidereal first again the, for the Babylonians, for the sidereal-lists, uh, liberal ascendant uh, ruled by Venus, Venus in Capricorn, which is the fourth place relative to the ascendant fourth whole sign house. Anyhow, Venus is uh, combust. Now uh, let's let's confirm whether that's the case. I mean, whether Venus is invisible. Yes, we see that. Uh, we see that Venus is grey, and so is Mars, so is Saturn. Uh, so the point is that in the tropical chart he has a, a, Mar a Scorpio ascendant ruled by Mars and Mars is also uh, invisible although Mars is exalted but ignore this for the, again for the Babylonians but they would, they would actually not, not look at this tropically so uh, anyhow the, the point is, is you remember that Mars is exalted and uh, so the, uh, here you will notice that uh, uh, you will notice that uh, both planets are are invisible. So this guy is an actor, again, very famous. Oh my God, you will not amount to any. And Venus is the planet of acting also. So with invisible Venus, invisible uh, Ascendant Lord, I'm sorry, but this guy is a multimillionaire. Very, very famous awards, etc. Again, this this doctrine is again, and I, I should I should be obviously objective and say that this when we when we get to um, uh, to planets that are uh, that are uh, combust, especially and also um, under the ray, so to say, within 15 degrees, and they're invisible. We have a problem that was that the later tradition also had to deal with because many other astrologers, in fact, the vast majority, said that being combust is the greatest affliction possible so again this is not just a problem for uh, the babylonian astrologers but also for for later astrologers although there is a doctrine that that offers mitigation certain cases where uh, being combust can actually be uh, or being invisible can actually be uh, a powerful thing i'm serious i will show you the the, the, the translation but the point is ignore this because this did not exist in the uh, Babylonian in the Babylonian tradition again they would say you're dead you will not amount to anything well again the guy is world famous and the multi-millionaire and etc however having said this what is interesting when I was uh, when I looked him up uh, uh, was that uh, one of his uh, spouses uh, I don't remember the first or the second wife she uh, she died uh, I, I believe she committed suicide or something it had to do with pills or drugs but it was a mysterious death and we see in the uh, in the tropical chart that Venus is the seventh lord and the twelfth lord of, uh, of loss of suffering of secrets and Venus is uh, invisible and again the, her death was uh, uh, was was again it's uh, there were you know scandals and you know ugly words being you know uh, said etc about her death but also in the sidereal chart mars is invisible mars is not protected mars is not exalted and again the spouse uh, you know died and uh, and also mars is lord of the second which is the eighth from the seventh the, the death of the spouse being secretive or something you know something that's uh, so okay uh, next um Let's see, uh, this is Cary Grant, 
uh, very famous author of, uh, author of, uh, of the 20th century, what I've written down again from taken uh, from the internet, film actor, movie star of Hollywood's golden era. Guys, this this again with, with liberal ascendant in both charts, uh, uh, I've confirmed that uh, tropically the liberal is, is the correct ascendant, but uh, the time is from autobiography, but anyhow, the point is liberal is the correct ascendant. But so with Libra, the moon is lord of the tenth uh, of the of the of the tenth relative to Libra, although tropically uh, the, the sun rules the midheaven. Uh, uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, well, the tenth lord is combust invisible, obviously. Uh, sorry, Cary Grant. Actually, I didn't. I didn't even bother when it's four degrees. I didn't even bother to uh, to look it up. But it's because I will show you with seven. With I showed you with seven with ten degrees for the moon that the moon is invisible. So the point is the moon is invisible. The, the, the tenth lord. Oh my God, your popularity. Uh, you know your social standing, your career, your reputation. You know you will not be visible, friends. This guy was again. Look him up. Extremely successful uh, actor, in, in in Hollywood's golden era. And in fact, in the sidereal chart, it's worse uh, because uh, the moon is not the temple. The moon is the tenth lord, but the sun is the lord of the midheaven. And also, the moon is uh, is in in her detriment here, whereas the moon here is in the fifth house of acting of of, of entertainment, and the moon is not is no longer uh, in detriment. The positive thing is the moon is, is separating. Yes, the moon is received, but again, they don't they don't use reception. The doctrine of reception appeared in the Perso Arabic. It was developed by the Bursa Arabs. So again, oh my God, the tenth Lord is invisible. You know, you're done. You know, give up. You know, don't don't go into acting. Don't go into a public profession again. Dead, dead wrong. Uh, next, uh, let's see. Uh, Zoltan Mason. This is the teacher of uh, of American astrologer Robert Zoller. Uh, who is who remains my my greatest influence uh, astrological influence one of my most influential teachers uh, now Zoltan Mason uh, was an astrologer himself obviously he was also a translator as I've written classic he was trained in classical languages he was also a diplomat he loved to play chess also and uh, uh, for those, the tropical chart, the, the, the early Scorpio ascendant is correct. Actually, he, again, he was uh, he was an astrologer, uh, but also we can confirm by by uh, again which house rules diplomats and you know politics the fifth house. He has the ascendant lord in the fifth house. Which house rules sports? The fifth house. He was again a very avid chess player. Which house rules stu students, not just children? The fifth house. Lord of the first in the fifth. Uh, he has the Lord of the Ninth, the Moon, uh, uh, very close to the Ascendant. Ninth house being uh, uh, foreign, foreign travel, living abroad, you know, uh, higher knowledge, astrology. It's uh, one of the houses of astrology. Again, the Moon very close to the Ascendant. Even though it's in the twelfth relative to whole sign houses, it's conjunct the Ascendant. So uh, the point is again. Uh, so he was uh, again also a diplomat, as I said. So the, he has. The point is in that again I'm doing this for the for the for the Sagittarius list. He has Libra ascendant and the Lord of the Ascendant is Venus, which is about seven degrees from the Sun. Now don't be hasty in your conclusions because again they would say that Venus is combust, Venus is invisible. That would be true in most cases. However, there are cases because Venus is the brightest after the Sun and the Moon that Venus is Venus uh, is the only planet. Uh, Venus can be. Uh, five six degrees from the sun and be astronomically visible there are such cases i've seen them so and uh, again for, for those that observe the sky because again this uh, this program here is based on the sky on observing the sky uh, not, uh i mean in various countries uh, so again we see here that venus is is invisible in this case uh, uh we see that uh, mercury actually again uh, someone would say that mercury uh is visible because it's you know 20 degrees from the sun well actually as you see mercury morning last minus six mercury he like you know in the morning it it, it disappeared in in the sun's rays it's is actually invisible uh, but anyhow the point is the ascendant lord is invisible oh my god you know you will never amount to anything you know you 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 know you, you uh you will be 
you will be weak, you will be powerless, you you know, etc. etc. Again, this guy was 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 a diplomat. This guy he immigrated in the United States. He lived for the in the, most of his life or about 50 years of his life in the United States, etc. etc. Uh, and what is what is also again very um, uh, puzzling perhaps to those that uh, ascribe to this uh, uh, notion that invisible planets are destroyed and powerless etc this guy lived to 96 years old public figure again look him up in astro.com you will see his uh, again I'm quoting uh, easily uh, checked sources uh, so again with the video chart Venus is invisible this man lived to 96 years Let's see what else, uh, who else rather, uh, well this one, uh, Mike Bloomberg, billionaire, yes, billionaire, uh, from birth certificate, uh, 340 p.m., uh, the ascendant lord is the moon, uh, in both charts, the moon is, is combust, and let's see, it should be of course invisible, uh, Mike Bloomberg, yes, as you see, the moon is grey, the moon is also invisible. Uh, Venus is making made a station, uh, or is making a station rather seven days. So v Venus will be turning direct. Uh, uh, Jupiter is making a station for uh, evening station. In other words, Jupiter is turning direct. Very very powerful indications. But ignore this. We are dealing with the ascendant lord. Oh my God, the ascendant lord. Yes, the eight. The eight also has to deal with uh, with investments and with finances because it's uh, opposing the second, and it could be other people's money, but also a house that opposes another house as per Valence and Moran, also carries uh, such significations. So uh, again, this guy is a billionaire. So something is really, really, really off again with with with. But again, this this is not just. Uh, uh, astronomically visible. This this is a problem also for for the later tradition. Uh, next. Uh, well, actually, I believe yes, I have one more case left, and that's uh, this guy, the Roman Emperor Maximilian the First. Now, this his chart obviously uh, was delineated by the tropical zodiac using the tropical zodiac, not the sidereal zodiac, in the 15th century by uh, astrologer, astronomer, scientist, professor Regio Montan, uh, whose name was. Uh, uh, Mueller forgot his first name, uh, but anyhow, he was known as Regio Montan, and as you sure you have heard of the Regio Montan house, house system, etc. etc. And uh, this is the chart. And uh, Robert Hand initially translated it from Schoner, the plagiarist, but actually, it turned out that Roman Kolev discovered that it was Regio, Mont it was Regio Montanus that delineated the chart of, of, of the emperor, and actually, at the, at the emperor's birth. I have the book from Roman Kolev. Again, uh, those that are, I have five or six books from Roman Kolev. I have his software. I support his work, etc. It's just that we have to differentiate between the primitive Babylonian astrology, as I've explained, in terms of the NATO branch here in this video and others. Uh, and again, this is very, very powerful ancient knowledge. It's just it has to be subordinated in the, again. Uh, so, the point is, is that this is a very, very telling example between for the, uh, 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 in terms of the zodiacs. Why? Well, you will notice. First of all, let me preface this by saying that uh, uh, the emperor's mother, Maximilian, uh, what was the name? Uh, sorry, I forgot. Some Portuguese, some Portuguese princess. Anyhow, that was married to the to the emperor. But the point is that her her other child, also a son, died in infancy. She was very, very concerned, obviously, for obvious reasons, for the survival of her child. Whether it would survive, whether it would become an emperor, etc., etc. But the first, uh, the first priority was obviously survival. As, again, in ancient times, uh, infant mortality was tremendously high. Other than that, they lived the same, uh, they had the same length of life as scientists have proven. Uh, when you remove the infant mortality, which skews the, the statistics. Uh, anyhow, the point is that Regio Montan uh, delineated the chart. And he predicted that not only would uh, this child live, but uh, he would become emperor one day. And this is what happened. And again, uh, Roman Kolev published the translation from the library in Vienna. And again, uh, I strongly recommend that uh, uh, that translation because the whole book is the delineation of the, of the, of the uh, emperor's life, a uh, horoscope. And uh, so the point is, is that you will notice that in the uh, in the tropical zodiac, the one the one he used. 
we have the Lord of the First Merc Mercury rules obviously both both ascendants as tropical and sidereal, but Mercury is uh, Mercury is uh, combust, Mercury is moving backwards retrograde, and Mercury uh, yes, and Mercury is combust uh, by the twelfth Lord and in the eighth in the eighth domicile relative to the ascendant, although Regio Montanus use quadrant houses. But the point is, this is a, an extremely dangerous configuration that would that that by itself is an indication of, of, of a shorter life. However, however, and here is the key, the key point here: Mercury is received by the Sun. Again, the doctrine of reception as developed by Persian Arabic astrologers, when when a planet is hurt by the Sun, but the planet is in Aries or or Leo, the Sun receives the planet. Vice versa. When a planet is in its own domicile, say Mercury is in Virgo or Gemini and or exaltation Virgo and uh, the Sun is in Gemini or Virgo, Mercury receives the Sun. I will, as a way, but the point is, is that again, and this is a very eminent factor because the sick light is uh, is uh, exalted. It's the, the primary triplicity Lord and also the sick light is by quadrant, by ascensional times, the, the, the sick light is, is, is pivotal. It's angular. So again, very important. So, uh, whereas here, take a look at the sidereal chart, Mercury is, is, and also we would also say that Mercury is conjunct, Mercury is protecting the ascendant because somewhat because Mercury is exactly conjunct the ascendant by antigen. And also, uh, Regio Montanus also said that Jupiter protected the native because Jupiter and the ascendant, although afflicted, in detriment and walking back. The point is, in the sidereal chart, it's such a mess that Mercury is not only, again, obviously, combust, uh, obviously, uh, uh, retrograde, but Mercury is in both in its detriment and its fall. It doesn't get any weaker than this, folks. Again, uh, uh, someone could say, you know, a sidereal well, Mercury is in mutual reception with Jupiter. Well, not, not, not quite, because uh, again, the rule is explicit. For a, for a mutual reception to work, the planet needs to be strong. The planet, the planet, an afflicted planet cannot receive. Also, Robert Zola told this. Uh, so again. Uh, so I don't know with the, how again with such a chart Jupiter protected, but again extremely extremely weak. And again here with Aries, the Lord of the Ascendant, and the Sect Light in Aries, which are which are signs of uh, uh, which are royal signs. Again, the native became an emperor. But anyhow, uh, at the sun is in mutual reception with Mars, also in royal signs, etc. None of this is true here. But let's not. I'm not gonna. Uh, the point is, uh, let me show you the uh, again with, uh, with Rumen's program. You will see that Mercury is in, is is invisible because Mercury is separating from the Sun. Uh, oh, sorry, let's uh, Mercury. Uh, where is Maximilian? Mercury is uh, Mercury is separating from the Sun, and someone and someone could say, you know, uh, actually forward. Mercury is separating. That Mercury could make a fuss. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mercury Mercury is invisible. So again, uh, this Mercury is invisible, and yet again. Uh, and furthermore, furthermore, Mercury is also the tenth lord, not just the ascendant lord. Oh my God! You know, can you imagine basing this knowledge and saying, you know, uh, you will most likely die, uh, you will not be, and and even if you survive, you will not become an emperor because, sorry, the ascendant lord and the tenth lord are invisible, guys, guys. Again, I I I I, I think that this should be the the final, if not one of the final. Uh, nails in the coffin of this doctrine by the Babylonian astrologers that invisible planets are powerless, are dead, etc., etc. Let's let's uh, let's now let me give you some knowledge that uh, that changes things, that explains things. Again, that was not present in the Babylonian tradition. Now, uh, uh, two years ago, I wrote this article on my website about the Horoi project, as initiated by uh, Hungarian classicist Leventia Laszlo amazing amazing guy uh, very very uh, conscientious very again classicist uh, he again he knows ancient Greek and Latin etc and this project started uh, a little earlier I did not know about this when I as soon as I found out I immediately became a patron in patreon and have been supporting ever since and there is the article I will link it in the description and wh uh, so why we should support this very very important again and uh, there is the here is the website horror project he has a patreon page also i will give in the description but uh uh the point is uh 
I will here you see I'm, uh, I'm here the point is uh, I will show you I will share just a brief just a brief translation from Levente uh, to see why it's worth supporting uh, again the, 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 this man for 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 translating the, these texts and for having them at our disposal for for pennies literally for, for five bucks for five dollars per month or ten dollars or etc uh, so this is, as you see, uh, excerpts from the Antiochus introduction by Porphyry that Leventip, uh, uh, Dr. Laszlo put in brackets, because this is not the original Porphyry. Anyhow, this, this, uh, 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 this again is translated from ancient Greek by Leventip Laszlo. Uh, on chariots, so the, as you see, the stars are in their chariots when they're in their domicile or exaltation. Here we have a footnote some astrologers write or trigon triplicity and in their own uh, bounds or confines so so such planets will be very powerful even if are they are sitting under the beams of the sun of helios since the sun is stronger than the other uh, stars or planets so again folks this changes things a lot a lot this was not present in the babylonian tradition because they did not have horoscopic astrology and again, the most advanced astrology was, was, was born with the Hellenistic times, as I've explained in my video of Brief History of Ancient Astrology. And if he, in other words, this planet, if he is capable of rising or pivotal and observes Selene, the moon, this planet will make the bird self-determining and authoritative. Here are the footnotes. Uh, the point is, this changes things a lot. And I'll, I would recommend that you go back and examine the planets, whether the, those planets that are invisible, combust, etc., uh, whether they're in their own domicile, exaltation, and or, or bound. And again, uh, for the above, this will also somewhat differ depending on the zodiac used. Again, I use the tropical zodiac, obviously, as I've explained. Uh, although I respect the sidereal zodiac a lot, also. Uh, uh, the point is. Second, this last sentence is also very key. If this plant is capable of rising, in other words, making a fasces, a plant, in other words, it's about within 15 degrees or, or whatever. But if this plant is actually making a fasces, making an appearance or, or, or pivotal and observes the moon, this, this careful here, pivotal, is it whole sign houses? Is it quadrant houses? Strongly advancing, as the Arabs said, and observes Selene, observes the moon. Careful here. Is this just, uh, uh, again, a uh, signed configuration? Is this testimony? Is this within 3 degrees or with, or with the moon within 13 degrees, the application? We have to be really, 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 really careful with these concepts. But the point is, this, this uh, doctrine uh, was not that, I mean, did not, did not survive or was not transmitted. Or, but it's not as simple as that, folks. I would like to give you the full information as always because there, there were astrologers that uh, uh, that uh, did not uh, agree that planets were uh, that planets were uh, 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 protected when they were in their own chariots or ca cover chariots. Uh, for example, the Perso Arabic tradition, Abu Mashar, Al Kabizi, etc., 9th century, 10th century, uh, they explicitly say that uh, even if a planet is in a chariot, it's, it's still harmed by the sun. And for those that are into horary astrology, I should have I should have quoted the reference, but it's in uh, introductions to traditional astrology by uh, translated by Ben Dykes, Abu Mashar, and Al Kabizi. They have this concept of return of light, and one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, configurations is uh, so a planet could be, uh, I, I believe, cadent or afflicted or somehow, and uh, it receives an application, it returns the light. The point is, one of the configurations that Abu Mashar gives or Ben Dykes has included is with, I believe, with Sun, Mars was with with Sun and Mars in Capricorn. So Mars is exalted, but uh, they say that uh, when a planet is again uh, uh, combust or under the rays, but was it? But combust for sure, the planet is returning the light. So even though Mars is exalted, the personal Arabic astrologer, especially Abu Mashar and Al-Kabizi, they would say that this does not protect the planet from uh, uh, from the sun's from being harmed from the sun's rays. So this planet cannot uh, it it returns the light. It cannot uh, conduce its business. It cannot uh, you know uh, do do its thing. 
So again, I would like to uh, again to to uh, to um, present as much information as possible to educate. But again, this uh, this this notion that these planets are totally again the Babylon the Babylonian uh, notion is as I, as, I, as I've shown it's 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 it's, it's simply again ridiculous it's, it's it's so much off that again these are real cases so uh, this is what I, what I wanted to share this is my channel ancient and Chinese astrology if you uh, if you resonate with the information if you like these videos uh, please subscribe please like the video if you have a question or a comment uh, leave them below I would like to read them and uh, and, and and respond to you uh, thank you